Welcome all of you and we are discussing on corporate tax planning. Today in this session we will ha we'll have a detailed discussion on the assessment, procedure of assessment, appeals and revision. To start with, to start with this first layer of discussion, let's understand what the assessment is all about and then slowly we'll process, uh, uh, proceed towards the, the provisions under Income Tax Act, the procedures for completion of assessment, the documentations, the document flow, the, uh, the intercommunication system and others. To start with, whenever a return has been submitted and that the return has been validly accepted by the Income Tax Department. Now, a question comes out that whatsoever an SSC says about his or her income or the deductions or the liabilities or the tax credit, TDS certificates, whether these are correct, whether the claims are genuine, whether the forms are proper, whether deduction claims are properly calculated or it, there, there, there are a scope opportunity for you know miscalculation, wrong calculation willfully or intentionally. Assessment is a process through which the authority checks and verifies with the document presented in the return along with the documentary evidences that are corroborative available on other occasions, other places, other portfolios corresponding relationship to understand that whether the income declared is proper, is not understated, whether the income declared is correct and tax paid is appropriate. The end of provision for assessment starts with section 143 subsection 1 or the 143 is the prime section, subsection 1 is the initiation. What's 43, 143, subsection 1 says, it says that uh, whensoever the assessing officer gets a return and prima facie he finds out that uh, the li tax liabilities are properly calculated and how much is the tax liability that comes out has been deposited to the government account either by way of TDS or by way of advance tax or by way of self-assessment tax. Or say in case of a ordinary employee who get a salary income, the tax on the salary is deducted by the employer and deposited to the government account. That gentleman or the lady concerned may be having certain amount of fixed deposit to the bank and that fixed deposit earns certain amount of interest. On the interest, bank has deducted the taxes and the balance portion of tax has been paid by the assessing concern, all documents are placed in the assessment record. So the assessing officer finds that there is nothing more to find it out because the income is too small and uh, all the documents are in place, all the papers uh, has been cited, everything is perfect. So you know he can say that this is a perfect example, nothing more to be uh, discussed, nothing more to be taken away and let's close this assessment, let's close this process. Section 143.1 invokes in this particular case. What it says? It says that it is likely to be a primarily or preliminary checking of this return of the income, preliminary, right? No detailed scrutiny of the return income is carried out. So, you know, the assessment officer never get a doubt or question that this person has concealed something because the income is too small and, you know, all other, all other revenues, the bank deposit, the tax deduction, other places deduction of taxes everything is set right so he find out that this is a this is a case which never calls for a detailed scrutiny right scrutiny means bring your bank account bring your uh, all statement of uh, mutual funds uh, share transaction land purchase flat sale nothing is required he issues a certificate, he issues an order, that order is the uh, uh, prima facie assessment order under section 143 subsection 1. 
right however he may made certain certain adjustment into it certain corrections into it certain adjustments into it what are the adjustments any arithmetical error you know totaling error some arithmetical error certain incorrect claim you know in case of uh, section 80d i have claimed it in 80u or 80dda i have claimed it in 80ddb something that like some incorrect claim if such incorrect claim is apparent from any information in the return i declared that this is the claim for the for maintenance of my dependent family members or dependent parents but i claimed it under the section right which says that deduction of medi claim or medical insurance claim for self so a incorrect claim but no willful intention to evade taxes the assessing officer may make a necessary adjustment and may you no know, correct it disallowances of losses claim if the return of the previous year for which a set up has been claimed was furnished beyond the due date it's like in another chapter in another discussion we had a discussion about the uh, return filing of return filing of a reversed return filing of delayed return etc wherein we discussed if you recall we had a discussion the law also says that even if i have a loss and i want to carry forward that loss to the subsequent years i can do i can do so provided i have filed a, a income tax return for that particular year provided then if i have not filed not claimed can i get this deduction and so sir, sir you cannot get this deduction because you are you have never claimed it properly so you cannot get this deduction so if that sort of a claim is there and the assessing officer find that uh, i claimed it but officially i am not eligible to claim he may disallow this particular claim and then disallowances of certain expenditure indicated in the audit report but not taken into the account while filing the income tax return give me an example give me an example in the tax audit report what has been said that provident fund deduction or gratuity liability has not paid within the due date section 43b of the income tax act says that statutory liability statutory legal liabilities provident fund gratuity bank interest if it has been not paid within the due date it will be considered as an disallowable item and it it will not be allowed as a deduction it will be rather added back it will be rather added back understand so the tax audit says it has to be added back but in the ground reality when you file the return it has not been added back what will happen the assessing officer will disallow it kaha pe where the assessing officer will disallow it under section 143 subsection 1 called as prima facie report prima facie uh, 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 assessment order preliminary checking assessment order and it's covered the first stage of assessment called as the assessment under section 143 subsection 1 within how many days it has to be done it cannot be indefinite the assessment under 143 subsection 1 can be made within a period of 1 year from the end of the financial year in which the return of income was filed in other words that in other words let me let me read out once again this assessment can be done within 1 year from the end of the financial year so 1718 2017 18 is a financial year right within 1 year from the end of the financial year in which the return was filed so the return was filed in june 2018 so what is the financial year 1819 is a financial year one year from the end of that financial year so from 31st march 2019 2019 to 31st march 2020 we can right the assessing officer can issue 143 subsection 1 that means assessment prima facie assessment under section 143 subsection 1 once it has been done then few cases require a detailed scrutiny and the scrutiny cases are selected through a computer assisted scrutiny selection system in short it's called as cas c a s s i repeat computer assisted scrutiny selection c a s s based on certain parameter what are the parameters because today every informations are plotted into the 
income tax portal. I purchased a flat, I sold a flat, right? I uh, purchased uh, shares of say 50 lakhs rupees, I sold debentures of say 1 crore rupees. All these transactions are absolutely online, these are all digitally noted. The respective authorities are uploading this information. I am right getting interest income from bank. The bank is also deducting tax at source. I know there is a bank's deduction of tax at source, but I have not included that income in my return. Assessing officer get all this information, my purchase and sale of properties, purchase and sale of uh, shares, purchase and sale of debentures, but you know, interest income, other income, properties, expenditures. So if any of this item clicks uh, the triggers for a computer aided selection system, then the system will take up the case and, and prompt the assessing officer that sir, please go for a detailed scrutiny a detailed in-depth scrutiny of this case 143 3 is the proceedings so 143 3 starts how it starts the assessing officer in that case need to provide a, a requisition to the assessee telling that you know your case has been selected for scrutiny we like to get a confirmation about all your income please bring your bank account, your share purchase details, your debenture purchase details, your, your land and asset purchase details, whatsoever you have sold, all documentary evidences and all the papers. Right. So, a notice has been issued or could be issued by the assessing officer to the SSC and that notice is called the pre-assessment notice. The SSC needs to file all the documentary evidences. With that, if the assessing officer is happy, good, fair, if it is not, then the assessing officer may further call for information under section 143, subsection 2, further information, give me some more details of the calculations and others. Once that is done, once that is done, then the assessing officer is through about the total income and then he recompute the income issues the final assessment order that assessment order is issued under section 143 subsection 3 here ends the story there may be very interesting issues like the taxpayer or the SSC never files a return notice has been issued despite that he has not filed a return so a person has got an income never filed an income income tax return assessing officer given him a notice then also he never files a return the assessing officer given him a notice to provide the proper documents during the course of the assessment. He given either not given any paper or given some uh, rubbish, uh, unuseful papers. Then assessing officer is not satisfied with the documentary evidence to find out the correctness of the income and the tax liability. What the assessing officer can do, he can pass out a best judgment assessment. A ju assessment which according to him is best is perfect and according to him he may take consider any income as he may deem fit this is called as best judgment assessment under the provision of section 144 under section 144 specific timeline is also given for that best judgment assessment finally on the income tax assessment side there is one more opportunity remains Assessment has been completed either under 143.1 or after detailed scrutiny under 143.3. After that, the assessing officer find out that something has been missed out. Some income which should have been included but missed out, omitted to have been included. And the assessing officer then can reopen the file and then reassess the income under section 147 of the income tax act 147 says assessment right where it is called as a reassessment or what the assessing officer has reasons to believe reasons to believe that any income chargeable to tax has been escaped from the assessment so income escaping assessment is covered under section 147 and this 147 <laughs> definitely provides an opportunity to the assessing officer to find it out that 
every income that supposed to be issued every income supposed to be reported has been reported if not he can he can re take it right consider it even on a subsequent date for issuance of 147 order also a notice has to be given and a proper procedure has to be followed so my friends we come to the close of this discussion assessment is like whatsoever you have filed the associate has filed verification correctness and authentication by the authority and if everything goes smooth assessment process is over if not the second process starts called as appellate procedure which we will be taking in another session till then thank you thanks for this session